my name is Ryan McLean. I'm, the, I'm a co-founder and the CEO at Drinkbox Studios. Uh, we're a small uh, development studio based in Toronto, Canada. Um, and on individual projects, typically I act as producer. Um, uh, the studio has been around for four years. Um, the first game we made, we released about one year ago, uh, and it came out on PlayStation 3 um, as a downloadable title. Um, through a, a program that Sony did called uh, the Pub Fund. And uh, it was uh, a 2D platformer called Tales from Space About a Blob, where you play this alien blob that likes to eat things. As he eats stuff, he gets bigger and bigger. Eventually, he starts small, eventually gets big enough to eat the world. Um, so it's a 2D platformer with a lot of puzzles and physics, uh, physics sort of puzzles built into it. Um, so that was the first game, came out about a year ago. Then more recently, uh, we just finished a PlayStation Vita launch title called uh, Tales from Space Mutant Blobs Attack. And it's a follow-up uh, to that first game. It's set in the same universe. Uh, you're also playing an alien blob. It occurs like a long time after the first game ended. And you're like a different blob with different powers. Uh, and that game incorporates uh, some of the input capabilities of the Vita device. So uh, touchscreen functions. Um, there's a little bit of back touch usage and some, some bonus sort of tilt levels with a, a sort of different art style to them. Um, so both of those games um, have, they're both very sort of cartoony graphics, um, kind of like a retro science fiction kind of uh, vibe. We were going for like a 50s monster movie kind of feel. Uh, and there's also a lot of humor in the games. Um, there are jokes many bad jokes often uh, in like the backgrounds on billboards and you know all kinds of references to other games and stuff like that so we like to try to put some humor in the game and keep them kind of lighthearted and a bit silly um, we have a new game that we are working on called guacamole um, which is a uh, sort of like a some people say metroidvania type game um, 2D, uh, side-scrolling, you play as a luchador, uh, so it's got sort of like a Mexican theme to it, um, and you can swap between dimensions, uh, and that one is a little further out, so won't be released for a little while, but uh, that's sort of our next big project that we're focused on next. Uh, we started about four years ago. Um, a group of us had worked together at another company called Pseudo Interactive, uh, and that company shut down. Uh, and we, you know, a lot of people from the studio moved away, but uh, we liked living in Toronto and we didn't really want to move, so we decided to try starting our own studio. Um, so we did that, and um, at the beginning we, we focused on getting external uh, contracting work uh, to help pay the bills at the start. Um, and so we did that, we worked for uh, Activision, uh, we did some work for EA and some other companies like that, other local companies as well. Um, and then at the same time, we applied for some government grants and things like that, um, and secured some to allow us to start work on, on the first game I was talking about, about a blog. Um, so we kind of did outsourcing work and uh, development on that first game in parallel, and we built our engine from there. And it took a long time to release that first game, but, um, but yeah, after, I guess, about two and a half years or, or so, uh, that's when that game came out. And, from there, we've had a very good relationship with Sony because the first game was done through um, Sony's Pub Fund program, uh, and that worked out pretty well. So that's kind of how we ended up on the PlayStation Vita. Uh, they approached us before the system came out and asked us if we would want to make a game for it. So uh, that's how that got started. So we have about 11 employees right now, and it's a mix of senior personnel and some uh, more junior people. Um, a lot of the senior staff that we have, uh, w we worked together at Pseudo Interactive before that company shut down. So uh, at the beginning, shortly after we started the studio, I think six of us were there right away. Um, and then other people on the team uh, have sort of come from a variety of places, um, uh, sometimes out of college or university. You know, um, Yeah, that's kind of the, how the team formed. We, we grew to about 10 or so people uh, as we were getting close to finishing our first game. And we've stayed at about that same size for a little while now, so we're pretty steady at that size. It's possible we could grow a bit more in the future, but we want to be careful about not growing too fast and focusing on um, keeping focused and not too big. Um, so that's sort of where things are at right now. 
As for how we work, um, we try to, we use sort of an agile process. Um, we try to keep flexibility so that we can allocate resources between projects if we need to. And that definitely happened um, on the latest game we released, Mutant Blobs. At the beginning, we worked for a long time with just three or four people on the game. And then towards the end, uh, we knew we wanted to hit the launch of the system. And uh, so we pulled more people on from the other project to help, help us out with that a little bit. Um, and so the size of the team working on Mutant Blobs ramped up towards the end. Um, but it's kind of nice to be able to share team members across multiple projects and have some flexibility in how you're allocating people. So we try to do a little bit of that. But at the same time, you have to be careful not to uh, distract people too much from one thing. So yeah, it's a bit of a balance, but try to keep things flexible. I think we all really want to make good, you know, high quality products. Um, so that's kind of an underlying uh, part of our philosophy as we want uh, to release stuff that's high quality. Um, I think in terms of design, we like to, as I mentioned, keep things flexible, so not like over design at the beginning um, and then have things locked in stone. You know, you'll set out a plan at the beginning, but then as you go, you'll be ready to adjust that plan, you know, as seems uh, beneficial. Um, we do a lot of uh, focus testing and, and um, that sort of thing. We like to watch people play um, our games as, as early as we can. Um, you know, once we hit alpha, we'll bring people in and just watch them play the game. Don't say too much to them, just take notes, look at what they're doing, and then talk about, you know, areas where we can respond to what we've observed. Because a lot of the time when you do that, they'll react to what you've done in a way that's pretty different from what you expected and so we try to use that information to help us like fix things. So we tend to iterate a lot, um, you know, watch what people are doing, change things around, watch what people are doing again, change them around, so that's kind of how things go usually. So we just released uh, that uh, PlayStation Vita game and we're um, doing a PC version of that game now so it'll be coming out uh, on Steam. Uh, we just announced that here at GDC. Um, and we also have uh, a new game that's different, set in a different universe, um, that we're working on. And that game is a little further out. Um, uh, there's you know, quite a bit more work to be done for that one, so uh, that's going to take a, a good part of our attention for the next little while, I think. And we, ha we have some uh, smaller outsourcing contracts that we're working on as well, but uh, probably that that new game, Guacamole, uh, will be the main focus of our studio for, uh, for a while. One thing I would say about Toronto is definitely um, there's a lot of government support, um, especially for smaller studios like ours. Um, so the Ontario Media Development Corporation has helped us out a lot uh, with our projects. Um, and then there's also federal programs that you can use too, but, um, but the Ontario ones have been very good for us. Uh, also, there's a big indie scene in Toronto, um, so there are a lot of other people building games with small teams that are really pretty good games, and it's inspiring to be in that community and talking to those people, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's definitely a positive about Toronto. Um, I, would, I think also Toronto has um, a lot of people, you know, and um, some good schools. Uh, University of Waterloo is not far away, University of Toronto. Um, so you can find talented people graduating at a university. Also some good art schools. Um, so it's not difficult, or not too difficult, to find talented, younger, sort of more junior staff. Um, so that's another good thing about being in Toronto. Um, yeah, overall I think it's been pretty great um, with all that stuff combined for us uh, starting the studio. We're, we're happy to be where we are. I do think that it does seem like things are changing pretty quickly, especially with everything that's happening with iOS. Everybody has an iPhone or an iPad, you know, or some similar device. Same thing with, you know, Android devices too. Um, but with everybody having those in their pocket all the time, um, it does seem to be forcing some changes in the industry, and I don't think that's going to just go away. Um, people are going to play games on those kinds of devices. so. So there are different kinds of games being made from that and it's changing the way other like portable platforms work and stuff so 
So I don't really know exactly where that's going to go or how things are going to fall out with that, but it's definitely a change that seems like it's not going to go away. So um, Also, it seems like the ability for people to download games has changed a lot of things as well, and that's probably not going to go away either. Um, it feels like things are much more fragmented now and sort of like there are more niche uh, types of things that people can be interested in and people can make games and get them to the people who are, you know, people can connect on those sorts of things more easily now. So the industry has kind of opened up to be more sort of broad uh, in what's possible. Um, so I think that'll just continue also.